This tutorial sheet looks at introductory feedback with second order systems. So a reminder, we're going to assume that you've gone through the video which give an introduction to feedback and how it affects closed loop behaviour. And what this sheet does is it gives some tutorial questions on second order systems. Now what you need to do is read the questions and then this is critical, you must pause the video and attempt the questions by yourself. Only look at the solutions once you've made an attempt by yourself because otherwise the tutorial sheet will have no benefit for you. Some background just to remind you and we're going to assume that open loop has a transfer function something like this y the output equals g the open loop transfer function times r the set point. If you use a simple feedback loop like this one given here with a compensator m then the relationship between y and r now becomes y equals gm over 1 plus gm times r. First question then. So we have a system G which is connected with three alternative choices of feedback. M's K1 or K2 or K3 and you see the values of K1, K2, K3 here 0 0.1, 1 and 10 and here's the transfer function we're asking you to use. What we want you to do is to compare and contrast the behaviour with these different choices of compensator and then comment on how the closed loop behaviour compares to the open loop. Now's the time to pause the video and try this before we move to the solutions. First then, we're going to look at the pole positions. Now before we do that, we need to write down what the closed loop transfer function is. So GC equals GM over 1 plus GM, which will give you K over S squared plus 3S plus 1 plus K. So there's our closed loop transfer function and most critically you'll see that this denominator this is the closed loop pole polynomial. So now we want to solve for the pole positions. If k equals 0 0.1 then we've got poles are going to be at minus 1.5 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus and then it's going to be 4 into 1 plus k. So we'll give the whole formula. And obviously if k equals 0 0.1, that gives you minus 1.5 plus or minus the square root of um, 9 minus 4, which is 5. So you're going to get 5 minus 0 0.4. I'm not actually going to solve those in any more detail. You can calculate that yourself precisely if you need to. If k equals 1, then we're going to get minus 1.5 plus or minus the square root of 5 minus 4. And that's, oh, I've forgotten to divide by 2, I do apologise. There should be a divide by 2 under that square root. So that minus 1.5 plus or minus root 1 over 2 is going to give you minus 1 or minus 2. And then finally, if k equals 10, you'll get minus 1.5 plus or minus the square root of 5 minus 40, all over 2. And clearly, what this gives you is minus 1.5 plus or minus j root 35 over 2. So with k equals 10, you've got complex roots, whereas with k equals 0 0.1 and k equals 1, you've got real roots. Now, remember, we're asked to compare something like the speed of response. And so if we look at this one here, this top one with k equals 0 0.1, you see we've got a very slow and a fast pole. If you look at these two here, you've got moderate speed because you've got a minus 1 and a minus 2 and if you look at this one down here you've got moderate speed as well so in terms of the speed of response actually the real part 
the minus 1.5 is fairly similar to this minus 1 and this minus 2. So in terms of speed of response, k equals 1 and k equals 10 are actually relatively similar. Though of course the k equals 10 does have the complex bit which we'll talk about in a minute. What about steady state gain? Well we've said that gc equals k over s squared plus 3s plus 1 plus k and therefore the steady state gain is just k over 1 plus k. So if k equals 0 0.1 you have 0 0.1 over 1.1 which is very poor. If k equals 1 you have 1 over 2 which is a bit better and k equals 10 you have 10 over 11. So what can you see? As k increases, the steady state gain improves and gets much closer to 1. But for small values of k, the steady state gain really is too small. What about input activity? Well, you'll notice from the previous tutorial sheet that we showed that u max is going to be equal to k times r. So in other words, u max is going to be either 0 0.1, or k equals 0 0.1, or 1, or 10. So if k is small, you have a small input, and if k is large, you have a large input, certainly in terms of transients. Finally, overshoot and oscillation. So again, what I'm going to do is remind you of what we had, the closed loop transfer function k of s squared plus 3s plus 1 plus k and I can write this as k over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared so if the system is under damped then it's worthwhile using this normalized form now I know that's only going to happen if k equals 10 so if k equals 10 I'm going to end up with 3 equals 2 zeta omega n and 11 equals omega n squared. So what that tells me is that zeta equals 3 over 2 root 11, which is, I'm going to be simplistic here, it's approximately a half, which means we are quite a lot under damped. So in other words, as k goes up to 10, we're going to expect a fair amount of overshoot and oscillation, whereas with k equals 0 0.1 and 1, we had real roots, and we don't expect that. So having done the algebra, let's go to MATLAB now and see if we do get the sorts of solutions that we've derived on pen and paper. So first, let's enter the transfer function. There you can see it, 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 1. Generate the closed loop transfer functions for the three different k's. So there they are. 0 0.1 over s squared plus 3s plus 1.1. 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. 10 over s squared plus 3s plus 11. We're also going to generate the ones for the inputs. We'll use those in a bit. So first, pole positions. So with k equals 0 0.1, there's your poles. Minus 2.57, minus 0.42. You'll see what we said. A slow pole and a fast pole. What about with k2? Minus 1 and minus 2 as expected and with k3 minus 1.5 plus and minus j 2.95. Again you'll see the complex bit is quite large as we expected. Now let's look at the gain with k equals 1 0 0.09 a very small and I'll do the next two together 0 0.5, 0 0.9. So you can see the gain increases as we increase the k. And finally, let's look at some of the plots. And here you go. You'll notice the blue plot corresponds to the small k. You'll see the output very slow and a very small steady state. And the input down here in the input plot, not much happening. The green, k equals 1, it's a bit faster than the blue. The steady state's improving but still not good enough. And the input, a bit more active, but not hugely so. And then the red, this plot here, corresponds to k equals 10. You'll see it responds much, much faster, as expected. A much better steady state gain, but quite a bit of overshoot and oscillation. And you've paid for that by having a large input, as you can see in this plot down here. 
Now for completeness we've shown the open loop dynamics, this sort of cyan type curve here, which you'll see is a bit slower, um, but is moving up to a reasonable steady state. Question 2. The system G is to be connected in feedback with a proportional compensator M equals K. And there's your G, 16 of S squared plus 4S plus 2. And the question is, select a compensator to give critical damping and an alternative compensator to give a dampering ratio of 0.7. And what sort of steady state gains do you get? So now is the time to pause as I move to the answer. All right, so this question was focused on damping. So first of all, let's write the closed loop transfer function as ever. So we've got GC equals 16K over S squared plus 4S plus 2 plus 16K. And this denominator, we want to write in our standardized form as S squared plus 2 zeta omega n S plus omega n squared. Now the first question, said set zeta equal to 1. <coughs> so how are we going to do that? So if zeta equals 1, what are we going to get? Well, we know that 2 zeta omega n equals 4, which tells you, therefore, if zeta equals 1, that omega n equals 2, by substituting zeta equals 1 into that. And therefore, you get omega n squared equals 4, which tells you that 2 plus 16k equals 4. You'll notice the constant term is here. And that tells you that k equals 1 over 8. So if you choose k equal 1 over 8, you should get a critical damping scenario. What next? We said tri zeta equals 0.7. So now I'm going to do 2 zeta omega n equals 1.4 omega n, because zeta is 0.7, equals 4. And that tells you that omega n equals 4 over 1.4, or omega n squared equals 4 over 1.4 squared. So now, again, I can separate the uh, omega n squared term, so I get 2 plus 16k, that's omega n squared, equals 4 over 1.4 squared. And I can solve for this, and I'll let you do it yourself, but what you get is k equals 0.385. So now what I can do is just see, substitute these numbers in and see, do I get what I expected? So we'll go to MATLAB, and here's the G, let's just create a bit of space there so we don't get mixed up. So there's G, 16 of S squared plus 4S plus 2. Let's add that K of 1 over 8 and do the feedback. So you can see there's K 0.125. And when I do the feedback, I get 2 of S squared plus 4S plus 2. And you can see that is indeed critically damped. If I want to look at the closed loop gain for that, it's a half, 2 over 4. What happens if I put in the 0.385. You can see I get S squared plus 4S plus 8.16. And what you notice about the gain, it's a bit bigger. So by allowing the damping to get slightly lower, I've been able to increase the steady state gain. Question 3. The system G and a compensator K are connected with the unity negative feedback. Where are the closed loop poles? What is the closed loop gain? and use MATLAB to show the closed loop input and output responses. And here's the system that we're given. So we want poles, gain, and then use MATLAB to show the responses. So there's the system. So first, let's go and write the closed loop transfer function. So GC equals 0.01 times 3.2 over S squared plus 0.1S plus 0.02 plus 0.01 times 3.2. And now I can simplify that to get 0.032 divided by S squared plus 0.1S plus 
to. So I can now solve for the poles from this pole polynomial there. And to do that, you can use your quadratic formula. So you're going to get the poles are going to be at minus 0 0.05 plus or minus the square root of 0 0.01 minus 4 times 0 0.052 or divided by 2. I'm not going to do that calculation. You can do that by yourself. And the gain, or the steady state gain I should say, is going to be 0 0.032 divided by 0 0.052. So now let's look at MATLAB and see what we get. So if we just scroll down a bit here, that's question 3. So we put in the g. There it is, 0 0.01 over s squared plus 0.1s plus 0.02. Put in the k. Do the two feedbacks. And you can see the top one, 0 0.032 over s squared plus 0.1s plus 0.052. I can find the poles. There they are, minus 0 0.05 plus or minus 0.2225j. I can do the steady state gain. 0.6154, which will be what you will have computed, and I can do the closed loop step responses. There we are. We can see the poles were complex with quite a large imaginary part, and so it's unsurprising that you've got a lot of oscillation here and a large overshoot on the output. Because k was 3.2, which is quite big, you can see the initial input starts at 3.2, quite big as expected. Question 4. The system G is to be connected in feedback with a proportional compensator M equals K. You see G is given here as 0 0.05 over S squared plus 0.4S plus 0.02. Use MATLAB to show how the behaviour changes as K takes the values 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 2 and 5 and hence choose a K which gives a good balance between settling time, rise time, steady state gain and overshoot. So we're going to go straight to MATLAB for this particular question. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a slightly cleverer uh, version of MATLAB to do this problem. So first I enter the G. There you go. G is 0 0.05 over S squared plus 0.4S plus 0.02. And I'm going to define the time scale which I think I need. There it is. Um, 20 seconds, 0 to 20, and I'll take 200 points to make sure the plots are smooth. Now, in order to generate the plots, I'm now using a loop. So if I dump that in, and then you see what I've got, you'll see I've said a loop where k takes the values I'm allowed. So you can change those k's if you want to do it yourself. I generate the corresponding feedback, and then the corresponding step response. There it is, step gc, comma t. And then you'll see I'm collecting all these different outputs into the same variable yy. So the first column for the first k, second column for the second k and so on. So now I can plot all these on a single plot. So let's just find that plot. There it is. So you'll see with k equals 0.1 I've got this dark blue, so a small k, quite slow, not a very good steady state gain. Increase k, a bit faster, better steady state gain. Increase k to 2, much faster, slight overshoot, good steady state gain. And the biggest k, a lot of overshoot faster but a lot of overshoot. So if you look at this you'll say I'm probably going to choose something around k equals 2. That's the one that's going to give me a balance between speed of response, steady state gain you see over here on the right, but not too much overshoot and oscillation. So there we are. We've given a few tutorial questions on second order systems with proportional feedback and given some ideas about how you could do the solutions.